you know what people say um, you never have a second chance to make a first impression and the uh, this is the problem the Neanderthals have had for more than 150 years Ever since the discovery of Neanderthal fossils uh, in the 19th century, Neanderthals have had rather bad press. In fact, the original name for Neanderthals was proposed as Homo stupidus, the stupid human. Uh, and people have variously portrayed them uh, rather gorilla-like and incapable of belief systems and symbolic thought. What we find here is evidence of Neanderthal painting, not only just smearing uh, pigments on the wall, but actually painting something that is symbolic, that represents something. This panel comprises of various components, so you can see red lines that form squares. Inside these um, rectangles that are formed by these lines, you can actually see animal paintings. So here's the back half of an animal, we don't know what type of animal it is. And here, very fading, uh, is a front part, here's a um, head of an animal, the legs, ears. On top of the squares, you see lots of red dots. Nobody really knows what this means, but it's certainly done by humans who came into these caves and painted the walls. And the very question is, how old and when did this happen? Uh, and normally, archaeologists would use a technique called radiocarbon dating, which dates uh, the time that charcoal uh, has been used to make paintings. Um, but we can't do this with these kind of paintings because they're made out of mineral pigments. So instead, we're focusing on these tiny white uh, crusts that have formed on top of the paintings. And they're made of calcium carbonate. And they're formed by the water percolating through the rocks. And they precipitate out calcite. If this calcite was precipitated on top of the painting, the painting must have been there for it to precipitate on top, which means the painting must be older than the age of the calcite. The uranium series dating of carbonates is actually a, a technique that's been used in geochronology for decades now. It's well established. Over the last 25 years, the developments in mass spectrometry means that we can actually date much smaller samples. This is really important for archaeology because it means that we can date these small carbonate crusts found in associated with cave art. The samples are first dissolved in a weak acid to flush out the uranium and then flush out the thorium so that we separate them out into two different solutions. The samples are taken to a mass spectrometer and analysed in order to determine exactly how much of the different isotopes of uranium and thorium are present in them. The samples are introduced and then enter a argon plasma which ionises the different atoms of uranium and thorium, so it gives them a charge. They're then accelerated past a magnet which deflects them according to their mass to charge ratio and then the signals of each mass are collected. This tells us exactly how much of each isotope is present and combined with the known decay constants uh, allows us to calculate an age for the mineralization of the carbonate that we're dating. The exciting thing is that this panel here has a minimum age of 64,000 years. 64,000 years ago in Spain there was only one uh, human species living and that was the Neanderthals. The modern humans like us, they arrived in Spain about 40,000 years ago. So our results mean that this red line, which is underlying this calcite, had to be made by Neanderthals. And the fact that we have this from three caves in the north, centre and south of Spain, older than 65,000, shows us that this was a deliberate part of their symbolic or cultural repertoire. They are making deliberate decisions as to where to emplace these and of course it's in the depths of caves where they have to be for one assumes a ritual purpose. So this is outside of their normal living zone. To my mind this closes the debate on the uh, on Neanderthals. They are part of our family, uh, they are ancestors, they were not cognitively distinct or less endowed in terms of uh, smart, they're just a variant of humankind that as such uh, exists no more.
And what we need to do is look at their archaeology, look at their skeleton, look at their genes in terms of what uh, they tell us about the human story as a whole.